he's been doing. And this is kind of an update of some of his projects as uh, more recently. So Mike. So last year I gave a presentation kind of as an introduction to how I approach my approach to modeling the Sierra Railway. Basically, my layout is titled Sierra Railway 1929. I'm kind of, sorry, John, I ripped off the name of your layout. But uh, anyway, uh, I am, my goal is to replicate as much of the railroad as possible, as accurately as possible. Uh, and so I do things a little differently, not as much operation, maybe a little switching here and there, but it's more about the accuracy um, more than anything else. Uh, there's no right or wrong way to do any kind of modeling, but that's the way I choose to do it. Uh, so basically this is a continuation of the projects that I showed in my presentation last year. Uh, so with that, I'll sit down and we can get started. So this first slide shows my recently completed, or more or less completed, model of locomotive number 28. Uh, talk a little bit more about how I built it later in the presentation. Still not quite finished. You can notice the smoke box front is not entirely accurate for the real locomotive, but I'm working on that by way of 3D printing technology. Uh, so the first project I would like to talk about is my model of Sierra Railway Boxcar number 322. Uh, and I choose to model rather obscure pieces of the railroad's rolling stock that really are forgotten because of the railroad's history of excursions and movies and the Railtown 1897 operation. Is this a that you're using? Uh, one of the things about, uh, well it's a wooden car, but one of the things I like to do in my modeling is to okay. try to use the the material, try to use the type of material the real car would have been made out of, so I try to avoid styrene as much as I can. Um, Being white, that's why it's so Yeah, yeah. But, uh, it's mostly made out of wood, um, with the metal parts being the exception. Um, so this car was built from very basic dimensions supplied to me by Kyle Wyatt. Um, he supplies the information for the majority of my projects, but that being that this car was scrapped about 1977 um, up on the rip track in Jamestown. Uh, unfortunately, no drawings were ever made of it. So what I had to do to get the measurements I was missing was extrapolate based on a few photographs. I think I've got them on the next slide. But um, yeah, most of it was guesswork aside from the basic dimensions like the length, width, and overall height, side door height and whatnot. Uh, my model is equipped with the new Sargent couplers, if anyone's familiar with those. They look and operate like prototype couplers with a magnetic ball on the inside that acts as a pin that you lift with a magnet. Uh, and top of model works are our trucks. Uh, this is a comparison of my model to the prototype. As you can see, the underside of the car is a little bit bare, but I'm working on it. Uh, on the left is the picture taken on the first railfan excursion on Sierra, August 22nd, 1937, uh, showing the car parked on a siding track near the depot. And the bottom right photo shows the 322 in service, in merchandise service on the Angels Branch. And uh, one of the interesting bits of information that Mr. Wyatt had shared with me was that he has a copy of a letter from the master mechanic Ben Stein in the late 1920s uh, that notes the car was in merchandise service on the Angels Branch in 1929, so I know exactly where the car was at the time of modeling. So the next project that I've been working on in the last year uh, is completing one of my models of the another lesser known car that the Sierra had early on. Uh, what these are are J. Hammond and Company style 34-foot flat cars, and I say style because these were not built by Jay Hammond. They were built by the Sierra in their shops. But they're essentially carbon copies of the Jay Hammond and Company 34-foot flat cars, uh, rebuilt from parts used from the Virginia and Truckee Railroad flat cars purchased about 1897, 1900 or so. And the bottom picture is one that I found digging through the archives in the Western Rail Museum at Greenlist Junction of a uh, the flat cars all lined up in a string at Chinese during the construction of uh, 
the, the very beginning of the construction of uh, the Hetch Hetchy Railroad and Dam on 1917, if I showed the whole photo, you would see the, the construction camp from Rolandi in the background. Uh, Frederick Rolandi has the lead. Oops, uh, I wonder, is, does anybody have any questions uh, about these cars? I feel like I'm missing something. Uh, they're completely scratch-built cars. The, the tricky thing about them was the trucks, which are swing motion arch bar trucks. Um, and I cannot for the life of me find any in HO scale standard gauge. Uh, and the narrow gauge ones are slightly too small, so I had to scratch build them. Uh, but uh, they're all wooden cars. Uh, with the, again, with the exception of the metal parts such as the truss rods and the grab irons, handrails, and whatnot. Uh, but uh, yeah, they were fun cars to build in a sarcastic sense because they were very tricky. But, uh, let's see, next one. Uh, another one that I've been working on recently is my model of Sierra Railway Caboose number 04. I say 04 because early on, during the Sierra Railway years, before the reorganization in 1937, they numbered their cars with a zero in front of the actual number. Uh, and as you can see in that rather small picture on the screen, sorry about that. But, uh, yeah, Sierra Railway 04 was built in 1887 for the Colorado Midland, we believe by the St. Charles Car Company. Uh, eventually, it had its platforms removed while still on the Colorado Midland and showing the appearance that it is in that center photograph. Sold in 1917 to the Nevada Northern Railway. Uh, they believe it was uh, sold to them through United Commercial Company for a copper boom that never materialized. And four years later, resold to the Sierra Railway for the Don Pedro Dam project construction. Uh, there were two cars. Uh, number six and seven on the Nevada Northern became cars 04 and 05 on the Sierra Railway, essentially the same exact car. One of them was wrecked for the filming of the 1946 film Duel in the Sun, and the other, I believe, was wrecked again for another filming job in the early 1960s. So these are cars that did not show up in a lot of the uh, photographs that rail fans came home with and that we see now disappeared very early on, very camera shy. Um, here's a project that I mentioned last year. Uh, last year I was going to bring my model of locomotive number three, which is my favorite. That's how I got interested in modeling the railroad was engine number three. Uh, but last year she was going through some pretty major upgrades, a lot of new parts, as you can see on the screen. The top left photo is a scratch built headlight from Styrene based on measurements of the one that should be on the engine today, which is on the floor in the roundhouse. Uh, I measured that and scratch built it out of Styrene in one afternoon. Uh, the top center photo is uh, a pilot that I built. Again, another part that should be on locomotive number three is in the prop barn. Uh, this is the one with the, rep, the red chipping paint on it. I measured that and built that model. Uh, and the lower left is the scratch-built tender cistern from Brass. Uh, you'll see an interesting bit of building that in the next slide, um, relating to the patches on the back. And then the engine coming together. Uh, it's hard to see in the pictures that I have in this slide, but I've got the little white extra flags on the front end uh, that I can remove if I like. Um, Basically, this whole upgrade was to try to make the engine easy to disassemble uh, and put back together in case it needed to make any upgrades in the future. And here's closer to completion. Uh, one of the things I added during that um, upgrade to the model was uh, Archer rivet decals, add a little more realism to it. Um, on the lower right was the interesting part that I was mentioning about the patches. I, a few years back, I had went and measured the patches on the back of the original tender cistern uh, and duplicated them as best I could with arch decals. I'd say it turned out pretty well. And some photos, some recent pictures of the completed model. Uh, 
too bad. Most of the pictures I have uh, reflect how the locomotive was looking during retirement years. I have no in-service pictures of the number three circa 1929 aside from those taken during the filming of the Virginian when she first wore the balloon stack and box headlight. Uh, but my goal is to model the engine in the general service attire prior to the filming of that movie. Uh, here's a more recent project that I completed uh, about in about two to three months worth of work. Uh, it's gone down quite a bit from the nine months that I started building models. Um, most of the engine is scratch built with the exception of the roundhouse 280 chassis. Uh, as you can see, the tender frame uh, is all scratch built. The pilot I built based on measurements of another one of the pilots that's in the prop barn at Railtown that I believe came off the number 28 uh, prior to the steel pilot that's on the engine now. Uh, it's really hard to see in some of the pictures that I put on screen, but uh, more Archer rivet decals on the boiler, uh, scratch built boiler tube whistle, which the Sierra had built in their own shops in their early years, old boiler tube whistle, um, scratch built domes, uh, smokestack, cab, tender, a lot of custom parts. As I'm going the extra mile to try to make the engines as accurate as possible, so I also spent the last couple of years slowly building up my arsenal of measurements of the locomotive. And there's a more finished model. Not completely finished, as I said before, but getting there. You can tell what it is. Um, you know, scratch belt tender, cab, boiler, dome, stack cylinders, and valve gear. The valve gear was the tricky part. Um, and it's part of the reason why I didn't bring any models this year, because I, as I was trying to repair it this past Thursday evening, it uh, decided to fall apart on me. So I have to go back and fix that next week. But yes, this was kitbashed from the Roundhouse Old Time 280, which has very close dimensions to the wheelbase of the prototype. And some more recent pictures uh, playing around with the engine. This will probably be my main runner uh, doing switching and pulling freight trains for the meantime. And here's uh, just about the end of my presentation. This half of the presentation is very short, but I have another little bit that I'll show you in a moment. Um, so for the next year, I'll probably be focusing on these projects here. Uh, the top left photo is Sierra Railway baggage car in RBO Express car number eight, which was built in 1908 by American Car and Foundry for the Sierra. It was rebuilt about 1913 from a combination smoker car into the RPO baggage and express car that you see in the picture. Uh, was scrapped or dismantled rather in 1977 due to extreme deterioration. The parts are now stored at Railtown. Uh, if you look through the yard, you can find some of the older passenger car parts for it. Uh, on the right is an early picture of Sierra number 24, shortly after coming from the Nevada Copper Belt, uh, about 1925, if I had to guess that date on that picture. If you look closely in a, in a higher quality image than that, you can see a number on the cab, whereas most of the engines in that particular paint scheme had the number on the tender and on the sand dome, but not on the cab. Um, so that was one of the reasons I picked that picture, although it's really hard to see. Um, the lower left is the uh, Jamestown, originally the heating house for the water and oil tanks during the winter time. Uh, that's what that extension to the building is there in that picture that's gone now. Uh, but that's one of the projects I'm currently working on. Where was that in the yard, by the way, exactly? Uh, it's directly across from the current day water tank. So right where the sand house is? Yeah, right next to the sand house. The sand house is behind it. Oh, okay, that's the one with the peaked roof. Mm -hmm. Okay. The lower center photo is one of the more interesting cars uh, that the Sierra had early on that didn't see a lot of use past 1940. Sierra Railway tank car number 601 
Uh, this was mainly used to transport loads of water with another Sierra tank car. Uh, Dave has record going through freight car reports of the two tank cars bringing loads of water down to Cooperstown, supposedly to refill the tank during the dry season. And actually on the top of the tank car in this picture, you can see a small gasoline pump. Uh, this was about 1941, if I remember correctly. But thanks to Kyle Wyatt, I have everything I need to start building it. Very interesting little car. Short little dome with that squat profile. Yeah, this was originally a Union Tank Lines tank car that was wrecked on the Angels Branch uh, on the railroad's first fatal incident, 1904. Uh, that tank car was uh, rebuilt by the Sierra and the dome was shortened. Uh, and by the time the Sierra got done modifying it, it made a very interesting car model. So that I thought was I would the, 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 the runaway wreck on Switchback 1, right? Uh, yes, sir. I believe so. June 25th, 1904, I think. And then one of the last ones for this next year, because these projects take a little while to build, uh, is another one of the interesting cars that, although very few pictures are taken of it, did survive quite a long time before it finally uh, collapsed on itself a few years back. Sierra Railway Boxcar number 324. Uh, this was another car used in merchandise service on the Angels Branch in 1929, so I know exactly where it was. There's a couple of interesting details on this car. One is the uh, Kindle type trucks that are similar to Fox trucks, uh, cast side frames. Uh, they were outlawed at the same time as arch bar trucks because they tended to fall apart at high speed. Uh, and the other interesting thing about this car is it has six truss rods as opposed to four. Yeah, so it supposedly was a very heavy duty car, uh, maybe for cement loading or whatnot. But, uh, this car was detrucked in the late 1940s, early 50s and used as the speeder shed on the uh, upper side of the main line in Jamestown. And some of you may have seen this car years ago and wasn't, weren't sure what it was. It collapsed on itself about 2004, and the hardware is preserved at Railtown. So that's it for this part of the presentation, and I have a second part that's a video of my models in action, which is where this presentation gets the name Rail Fanning in Miniature. Uh, so let me set that up for you.